Okay, so I've always kind of wanted to do a, a bit of an instructional video in regard to weight machines. You see a lot of stuff out there on lava lamps, but not a whole lot on these guys. So, what we have here is a lava brand Adriatic model weight machine. You see these from time to time on eBay, and I myself sell them from time to time. Bear in mind this unit is in really good shape and it has all of its fluids, so we're kind of working with the best possible example here. Uh, so you can look, if you look, you can see these bubbles and kind of a uh, separation of the fluids there. That's because I just recently disturbed the vessel. Okay? So something sometimes that you might see happen here, if I remove the vessel from its base and stand it up, okay, you'll see the fluid sticking in little droplets to the side of the container. It's very common, it's expected. And you got the bubbles down there at the bottom here. The way to alleviate that is to take the vessel by one end and you sharply rotate it and you can see those little bubbles dislodge from the sides of the interior of the vessel. You usually give that a few minutes to settle. Personally, I like for it to settle in the horizontal position that it's actually going to rock in so that you don't have to go and disturb it again. And that can also be done I need to be careful here, I'm going to do this with one hand. It can be done from this side as well. You grab it by one end, and those little droplets will dislodge from the inside and go back to where they're supposed to be on the bottom portion. Okay. That looks good there. Then you just give it a few minutes, depending on how much it's been disturbed, for those fluids to settle down. Those bubbles will all start to pop on their own and you know, the fluid will go back to where it's supposed to be. Okay, uh, I get a lot of questions from people who have machines they bought online that have an air bubble in them. That can be for one of two reasons. One reason is that some of the fluids in the vessel have evaporated over the years. That's a problem because the machine's not going to have proper wave action. When it goes to tilt to one side, like so, it's not going to have the weight proper weight distribution for it to go back to the other side naturally. So you're stuck with this wave that only goes in one direction. It's no bueno. So there's a couple ways of rectifying that. A lot of people try to add their own fluids to the machine and what you end up doing is damaging the actual fluids that are in there and the machine becomes very unattractive. The fluids will get super cloudy, that kind of thing. You can't just add baby oil to your machine and think it's going to be okay because that's not all that's in there. I do, or I will be offering a service to refill old lava vessels that have this type of plug on them. The removable rubber plug, not the ones uh, that are on some of the Caribbeans that have an acrylic plug cemented into the bottom of the vessel. I'm not going to touch those because they can be very dangerous to work on as far as breaking the actual vessel or moving that plug. Anyway. And another situation scenario where there could be air in the vessel, like there is in this one right now, is that there's supposed to be a little bit of air in there to accommodate for thermal expansion of the fluids. If they were to uh, see an extremely hot temperature, maybe in a storage unit or something like that. So, lava actually incorporated what they call an air track in one end of the vessel, built into one of the end caps. It's on the opposite side of where you would fill it from. So if you can see in there, you see that little insert that's mounted in there? There's an opening at the bottom of it. And what you want to do is take your vessel, turn it upside down, lift this side, whoop, I'm sorry, lift the side with the air trap in it. Okay, and we just totally disturbed our fluids again. You should probably do this part first, right? And you want to tilt it, sorry, I was doing this with one hand, so all the colored fluid that's stuck in there comes out and goes back down to join the rest of the blue fluid. All right? See, that's all coming out of that air trap up there. So now, we still have the air bubble sitting there. And what we want to do is, with the air trap to your left, Okay. Set the vessel down. There goes the bubble. Now you're going to lift this side 
and watch your air bubble go inside of the track. Stand it up. Now our long side of the vessel is on top. So we want to turn this and carefully situate it on the base. Now if you look, no more air bubble other than the ones that are in there. So we're going to go right over our process again here with unsticking the uh, errant droplets that aren't supposed to be sticking to the wall. Sit it back down. Going to let it relax and chill out for a little bit. You know, we just disturbed it. You're going to see a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, bubbles in there. And you can see where we trapped our air bubble. It's up at the top of the air trap. Okay, and these bubbles are popping pretty rapidly at this point. One thing you never want to do is to violently shake the wave vessel. A lot of the time, uh, when that happens, you'll develop a permanent frothy, like kind of detergenty looking foam inside of there, and it won't go away. So you want to always try to handle it as gently as possible. And it looks like we're getting close to having a nice flat bottom layer there. So I'll go ahead and throw this guy on and see how he runs. Not too bad. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe.